Hello, and thank you for clicking on my video. I am Beth Ann of Beth Ann Stamps, and this week I am making some St. Patty's Day cards with the Lucky Clover stamp set. This was a bundle in the mini catalog. Unfortunately, the punch um, is out of stock, and they're not able to get it back in in time before the catalog runs out. I'm hoping that someday we are past the COVID supply issues. But in the meantime, this is a very simple design to cut out, as I'll show you. So we're going to be making some non-traditional St. Patrick's Day cards. So let me bring you in the samples that I have. This was one that I used in we do the Facebook Live events quarterly myself um linda anderson of linda lou creates and linda of stamptastic designs and at the end of that day we did an interactive session and i had two different ones picked out <laughs> and then people would vote for the ones that they wanted and so this is the card that was created then i believe um linda lou creates even did a, a facebook live on this last week so very cute card. I just love it. The paper I'm using is Fancy Floral Designer Series Paper out of the new mini catalog. I love this paper. It's being used on both of these cards. So let's go ahead and, and get started. I'm actually pulling in the other kit that I had with this one. We could either go with the Evening Evergreen Calypso Coral and Soft Sea Foam or Balmy Blue Orchid Oasis, and Fresh Freesia. So the card we're going to make this afternoon, or in this video, I should say, is the one using these colors. So we're going to start and do the inside. So I'm going to stamp my sentiments in the darker Orchid Oasis color. And on the inside here... I'm going to put a good friend is like a four leaf clover, straight enough. Hard to find and lucky to have. And then I do have a half inch piece of the DSP left. And I'm just going to put that along the edge here and trim it down to size. This side. Look, I've already been in ink. <laughs> you can see all that ink. All right. So that's the inside of the card. Pretty simple and basic. Do you celebrate St. Patty, St. Patrick's Day? I know in a lot of different places they do it. I think Chicago dyes their river green on St. Patrick's Day and has a big to do. Um, our sons like to go to the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Pittsburgh when they were living in the area. Okay, so now we're going to do um, the front of our card. And all of these pieces measure three and a quarter inches high to cover the full card base. And then this one is three and a quarter, uh, three quarters, a half inch, and one inch. So you could mix these up and do them any way you want in them. And all the, the dimensions will be in the coordinating blog below. So let me go ahead and get these glued down. Just line that up edge to edge. And then I'm just going to pick the next one up. You could put these in any order. You could start with the narrowest to the widest. Come on. I'm sort of mixing them up. I thought this was a, a cute design. And there we go. All right. Here's our card base. So now we're going to bring in a piece of very vanilla. 
I went with very vanilla. I thought with these soft colors, it coordinated well with it instead of popping off in white. So I am going to stamp the big clover in each one of these colors. And when I stamp them, I like to make sure that I'm stamping the direction of the punch. So when I'm putting my paper in there. So this one is the fresh freesia. Oh, such a pretty color. Don't really think about purple too much, do you, when you think about St. Patrick's Day with the green. But they look good. Oh, balmy blue. And then let's do Orchid Oasis. It's nice because the Designer Series paper, the colors go so well together. And you can just use that as your starting point to know what colors to pull together to make a card. They make it very easy. All right, so here is my, oh, if I can open my punch. One. I was so happy to see a St. Patrick's Day stamp set in the catalog. I don't think Stampin' Up! has had one since I have been with the company. So I was very thrilled to have that. All right, and then before I go on, I am going to also stamp um, Happy St. Patrick's Day on this sliver. These are just pieces as you cut your five and a quarter by four pieces for inside the cards. You end up with this little strip, so I save these because they are just the perfect size for sentiment strips. Clean that stamp off. Okay. Let's see. And then I'm going to trim a little bit here and just do that banner cut on the end. Into the center and the two points. And then I'll just turn that off. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in some dimensionals. So for the first one I put down, I'm gonna put dimensionals on all four leaves. I'm gonna start with the darkest on the bottom. There we go. And then I'm gonna do blue next. And I think I may have gotten this one in the wrong place. So I only want those dimensionals on the part that is not over top of the one underneath it. I'm put a little bit of glue here. That'll tack it down to the other one. There we go. And then of course my last one, I'm gonna put the dimensionals right here. A little bit of glue to hold it onto the other one. There we go. And then I'm going to pop this up also. right in front of me. If they were a snake, they would have bit me. May need to cut that end off. We'll see. Yeah, I actually don't need it that far. Come on, there we go, Oop. a little too far. I wanted to, let's see if I can get it up here. There we go. Now for some dimensionals, or for some embellishments, not dimensionals, I'm gonna bring in my Orchid Oasis, and then these are the faceted gems. 
and I am just going to color some of these with my dark Orchid Oasis blend. And then find my pick a tool. Make sure I grab the And we'll put some of those on there. My sticky putty isn't picking up. There we go. Happy St. Patty's Day. So non-traditional colors, but I really, really like them. Let's look at this one. This one has sort of more of your traditional colors that you think about. So these ones start with soft sea foam cut four and a quarter by 11. The other one was the standard um, five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter. But this one I decided to go with a top fold. On the inside, I've already put uh, my piece of DSP and I stamped an evening evergreen that a good friend is like a four leaf clover, hard to find and lucky to have. And then for the outside, I pulled in that same designer series paper only this time I did a little different. This is the soft sea foam. I cut an evening evergreen and this is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And then the designer series paper is at eighth of an inch smaller. So it's five by three and three quarters. Again, these will dimensions will all be in the coordinating blog linked below. So I thought these colors sort of were traditional St. Patrick's Day colors, but I love the dimension and this one brought in the Daffodil Delight, a little bit of that yellow. And I have to admit that I'm one of those people that loves gnomes. So I had to bring the gnome into this set. Okay, so this is cut with the scalloped contour dies. It measures about two and a half by three and three quarters. But again, those dimensions will be in the coordinating blog below. So I stamped him in Memento, Memento Tuxedo Black, and then I colored him with um, Soft Succulent, Evening Evergreen, Daffodil Delight, some Crumb Cake Shoes. And then for the beard, I simply used um, the light gray, light gray granite and went over the lines in the beard that are there. And then I take um, the blender pen, the white one that sort of helps erase. It's called the color lifter. And I run that over it and it sort of softens out those gray marks to just give you that hint. And then I did color the little flowers in soft succulent, even though they're flowers. I'm sticking with the green. And then on the background, I used this mini clover stamp and in soft sea foam, I stamped off and then just put the hint of those behind. So we're going to put that right in the middle here. And then I did stamp Happy St. Patrick's Day. Again, I'm going to trim off these edges and I'm going to do a banner on each side this time. There we go. And we're just going to put this right underneath with some dimensionals. Make sure I have them turned it the right way, these little hexagons. And then I thought this little guy should be holding a clover because he was lucky enough to find one. And so I just stamped it on an extra piece of paper. And this is where I was saying, these are so simple to cut out. And there's so many things you can do with them. This is like watching paint dry, isn't it? Watching somebody fussy cut out a little piece. All right, 
There we go, not too painful. I'm going to glue it directly down. And when I stamped this, it had a little whoops there, so that'll cover that right up. And then I did the same thing. I bought out these faceted gems and then I colored them with Evening Evergreen. And so I'm just gonna take a few of those and put them here. I love that we can color the pearls and the clear gems. All right, so that's my non-traditional cards for this week. And then I did want to share with you one um, that was part of the live Facebook event that we have. Um, I'll be posting when we do our next one. This was more of a traditional card that I presented in that class. I used the stitch leaf dye to give some texture on my white background. And the colors that are with this are shaded spruce. Sending luck and love. Happy St. Patrick's Day. So there's more of that traditional so I hope you like these ideas. Look at that designer series paper, pattern paper that you have. Let it drive your colors of what you pull to go with it. But they all work. So I want to thank you so much. I truly appreciate when you take time out of your day to watch my videos. I would greatly appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I am trying to grow um, my people that are subscribed and so I appreciate your help with that and also leave me a comment below how did you like these um, do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day I'd love to hear what your traditions are and if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in the products I'd love to help you with that um, there's a link below where you can find me on Facebook Instagram Pinterest and also my email is bethannstamps at gmail.com. So would love to hear from you. So thank you. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.